Angel White Wolf, the Dark Enlightened One. Chapter 4 So you're admitting your own darkness. You can't be dark and enlightened at the same time. Either you're dark or you're enlightened. It's simple logic. If I enlighten something, then it's not dark. Simple logic can sometimes confuse us. You know, speaking of enlightenment is really to talk about states of consciousness, about how much we know about ourselves, of how much we understand how life works for us. Oh yes, life works differently for each person, no matter how much the people who want to talk about universal and eternal laws don't like it. But there are universal laws. Mention one. Not just one, but many. For example, the laws of physics. Gravity operates all over the universe, so does electromagnetism. Of course. Except under special conditions, like in a black hole. Oh, and let's not forget quantum physics, where apparently impossible physical phenomena, like one body being in two places at the same time, happen all the time. Well, there must be some rule that that's what we would all like, right? To have one single law, to be told exactly what things are and how they work all the time. If only we knew this, it would be so easy to follow. But no, everyone is a universe apart. The same universe isn't the only universe. <laughs> and the fact is that there are no absolute rules. There are only, in the best cases, tendencies. There are no rules, just tendencies. Of course. That's why we rebels can exist and be so successful. If there were truly universal rules, they would be impossible to break, and we rebels would have nothing to do. Okay, I get your point. There are no universal laws, and therefore life works differently for you than it does for me. Not for you and for me, but yes, for us, in respect to all the others. And why doesn't it work differently for us? I already told you, because you and I are the same. <sighs> Okay, let's save that for the time being and let's go on with the point that life works differently for each person. Right, and since life works differently for everyone, we eventually realize it and we begin to understand how our life works. We are our life. Did you pay attention? Our life is what we are. That's why, when we begin to understand it, we begin to know ourselves consciously. And when we know ourselves completely, we become enlightened. No. Someone who is enlightened keeps on learning things. In fact, he learns much more than someone not enlightened. An enlightened one is not someone who knows everything, but someone who knows he knows everything he needs to know about himself at this time. Wow. That sounds like something important. It is. Let me repeat it and pay more attention this time. An enlightened one is not someone who knows everything, but someone who knows he knows everything he needs to know about himself at this time. Okay, I'll keep it in mind. Do so, please. Yeah, yeah, I told you I will. But why did all this come up? <laughs> Don't you remember what we were talking about? Well, that life works differently for everyone. But that came up because of your conflict about someone enlightened being able to be dark. Ah, of course. <laughs> Welcome back. I was telling you that enlightenment and darkness only refer to states of consciousness. Someone with a high state of consciousness is enlightened, and someone without it is still in darkness. It's easy to call light good and darkness bad. After all, we humans are visual creatures, 
and we have ancestral memories about darkness being dangerous because we can't see what's there. Of course, but it's also easy to talk about an elevated consciousness being enlightened and good because it can see what is within itself, whereas a limited consciousness is in darkness and therefore it's dangerous or bad. Light and darkness are only symbols of high consciousness and of consciousness which isn't high. Or of self-consciousness and ignorance about ourselves. Then there it is. Darkness may not be bad, but it's not very elevated. No, this is where everyone gets confused. You are contradicting yourself. Allow me to explain myself. Light and darkness were adopted as symbols that represent a person's state of consciousness. Are we okay up to here? Perfectly. Now, light and darkness were also adopted as symbols of good and bad, right? Right. Then, people started calling what they consider bad, dark and what they consider it good, light. Sounds logical, right? Very logical. This is where the conflict comes in, because they decided in general that a lot of things were bad, and we know that nothing is good or bad, it depends on the context. Then, then, simply from custom, and especially from fear, people started deciding that some things were bad, and all through these things have changed enormously from culture to culture, from one time to another, and from place to place, many seem to keep representing what is bad or dark. Of course, like homicide, you're not going to tell me that's good. I'll tell you that if a father sees a criminal aiming a gun at his daughter's head, and he kills him before he kills her, there won't be any human power, nor legal power, that will be able to convince him that he did something bad. I'll tell you that the crusaders who butchered in fiddles for the Catholic Church not only believed they weren't doing something bad, not only did they believe they were doing something good, they thought they were doing something holy that would earn them absolute forgiveness of their sins by God and an automatic pass to paradise, just like a fanatic Muslim thinks that blowing himself up and killing what they call infidels will be enormously rewarded by Allah. That's right. Homicide has been seen and is seen as something good in different situations. I understand we're back to nothing is good or evil in and of itself. It depends on our perception. Yes, but there's more. Humanity realized that certain behaviors like homicide could cause a lot of problems. Other conflictive subjects have been sex, money, self-indulgence, among others. The simplest thing was to declare these subjects were bad and to ask everyone to stay away from them, or, in the worst case, to approach them, but following a series of rules. Of course! That way we would avoid self-destruction. Don't you think that is valid? Very valid. And although it never worked completely, it worked well enough for us to get to this point. For which we should be thankful. And I am. I love being able to live in this time. However, that tool, which was so useful, I'm talking about forbiddance, is becoming obsolete. And humanity is feeling it. That is why rebels are becoming so abundant everywhere. I'll soon go into it. But first you have to keep defending your beloved darkness, right? Right. Darkness represents that which historically has been forbidden. Light and darkness, then, have a double symbolic meaning. People don't notice it, and that's why they think that someone enlightened 
isn't capable of doing things they call dark. I don't get it. As we have said, to enlighten only means turning on the light so we can see what's there. If we are talking about our consciousness, it means being self-conscious. This is one of the two symbols. But in the other, light represents what is good. This double symbolical meaning makes people believe that an enlightened one, a being who is self-conscious, will exclusively do things that are considered good. But the fact is that bad things are necessarily so, right? Exactly. Having sex isn't bad. Cursing isn't bad. Killing isn't bad when it's done in a specific context. Is it bad to kill a cow to eat it? Is it bad to curse? So bad that it's better to swallow my anger and develop an ulcer? Is it bad to kill someone who is on the verge of killing me? Is it bad to kill in a war to free my people? Is it bad to have sex with a person who is 17 years and 11 months old and we are in love? And good if she's 18 years and one day old even if it's casual sex? Is casual sex even bad? The line between all this is very thin. It's something very delicate and... And applying rules or laws pretending they are universal is an impossible task, not to say stupid. But we can't let everyone do as they please. No, because most people aren't ready. And as we said... If you don't forbid them from using their tools, they'll use them to destroy everything. But there are more of us who have learned how to use our tools every day, and we know how to use them in our own benefit and in that of others. Now I understand what you were talking about. Every day there are more people who don't need rules to not hurt others. And we know how to do the opposite of what many rules say for our benefit and that of others. Exactly. You've understood me perfectly. And since we know this, we don't like to be limited in our behavior. Because in our case, rules are no longer something that limits us to benefit society, but something that keeps us from achieving our maximum potential. Wow. Well, I couldn't have explained it better. Thank you. So yes, I'm a dark creature. Why? Because I think and act in ways that many people, maybe most, would consider incorrect. Give me some examples. I'm very liberal sexually, and my mind is very open and active about it. There's nothing wrong with that. You know it. I know it. Now, if you had to fill out a work form where it said, speak about a subject of great importance for your life, would you be willing to write a small essay about the benefits of oral sex as lubrication before coitus? <laughs> of course not. Why not? If being open about sex isn't wrong, why wouldn't you be willing to write something like that? Because I probably wouldn't get the job, even if the person who read it had an erection as a consequence of my essay. <laughs> no doubt he would. Do you understand now? This business about bad or dark things is nothing but a hypocritical classification. I go back to the symbolic meaning of darkness as all those things people hypocritically despise, all those things they fear. And at the same time, they want. Sex is bad, but everybody wants it. Money is bad, but everyone wants it. And accepting that you want to have sex and money is also bad, so everyone pretends. And wouldn't pretending be bad in their twisted hypocritical morality? Yes, but it would be the lesser of two evils. Well... Here is the difference between an enlightened one and those who are not. I know and accept myself, 
And so, it's very easy for me to love myself. Those who are not enlightened live in fear of what they are, of their own desires, of their thoughts, dreams, or fantasies. Then we are all dark beings. Who doesn't want money? Who doesn't want power? Who doesn't want sex? A lot of people. You want these things. I want them. But a lot of people don't. They are like that. And that's all right. I dare say that many of the great enlightened ones of the past have been like that. And therefore, not having other models, humanity decided that to be enlightened, you had necessarily to be like them. That is a mistake. So many of us are dark creatures. Right. And don't let anyone call you evil because of that. Because I tell you there is more good in you than in almost all the people you know. I've always felt that but I have never been able to say it because if people heard me, they would say I am not humble, and that is not good. <laughs> Stupid twisted world. But if so many of us are dark, then why were there no dark enlightened ones in the past? Because humanity wasn't ready to understand us. In fact, they were barely able to have understand the Luminous, enlightened ones. Ha! We rebels have become stylish only recently, and humanity's collective consciousness, God, the Great Spirit, or whatever you want to call it, knew perfectly well that the only enlightened ones that could work in the past were those who inspired others not to self-destruct. That is why martyrs were quite the thing. I die for you. So you be good for me. And now, we rebels are stylish? Precisely. <laughs>